All right, moving right along with our dimensions, we'll talk about the angular. So keeping in mind that the uh, the behavior of them with the grips works the same with pretty much across all of these. The same as the tabbing key, uh, using your tab key on the keyboard to toggle between where you want a dimension to. And within different families, like you'll notice doors and windows, they have a snap dimension point in the middle as well as on the edges. Um, for that. The same as with curtain walls, you'll notice that there's different snap edges and those are based on reference planes that are nested within the families. So angular, angular dimension, you read down here in your status bar, um, click references, then click an empty space to finish. So angular dimension, well, from here to here. And then if I go up here, it goes this way, panning. And if I go down, it goes this way. Escape, escape. Now, maybe I want my angular dimensions to have a different tick mark. Pick on here, edit the type because I want to change them all. Leader type is fine, but I don't want a tick mark of this. I want a tick mark of a, a filled arrow kind of thing. Arrow filled 15 degree. Hit OK. Click out. There we go. I also don't want to have the extra a witness line like these guys have. So I'm going to pick on here and go back into my edit type. Uh, witness line extension right here, 2.4, 0. Hit apply, hit OK, click out. Oh, wrong one. It must be the dimension line extension. Dimension line extension, 0. Hit OK. That's right. That would make sense. And then if I pick on here, once again, I can move this guy around. Okay. Um, your units are going to control which um, your project units under manage here. Okay. Um, up in here, uh, project units controls how the accuracy of these. And then again, here on edit type, you can go in here and change your tick mark and your arrow size and all your the look and feel okay you can also say alternate units inside of here and say yeah, i want to see you know below i want to see uh feet and inches right hit okay hit okay and then we'll see feet and inches inside of there and you can also specify the gap as well okay so you can have that kind of comes in handy so arc um, angular not a problem you pick two edges and then basically you place it if you move it it'll just readjust this way by dragging it so that's not a big deal radial uh, let's um, let's draw some walls let's pick on here and say create similar and let's turn the radius on and let's give a radius of a meter sure it's going to round all my corners Escape, escape. Uh, radial dimension, what do you think? Place it, put it on there. Click on here, do it. After you do it, you can pick on the wall and then you can change the number. And then it'll update, just like any other dimension, right? If you actually pick on a dimension and, the, and this changes, be it temporarily, if you wanted to turn a temporary dimension into a permanent dimension, just click on it and turn, turns it into a, term in, a permanent dimension. And then after that, if you pick on there, you can change this number and it'll adjust it accordingly. So dimensions drive the elements. When you click on an object that's been dimensioned, you can pick on the dimension and change the number and that'll update it. That's why I always say it doesn't matter the size of things in the beginning because after you draw it, you can click on here, pick in here and change this number. Okay, so radial dimensions. Um, diameter is pretty much the same thing. The only difference is it gives you the diameter instead of the radius. Escape, escape after the fact, and again, you can move this around. You can grip and stretch these guys. That's the center point, like that. So we've got diameter. Arc length is a good one. Okay, um, let's let's move this guy out. Give a little bit more room. And let's make this a little bigger. 
Oh, too much. Okay. How about 1300? Not bad. So arc length, pick on here, pick the arc length. And oh, and you have to pick endpoint. Sorry, arc length. Uh, select an arc which dimensional measure the length. Yes, and then it says pick reference points. And I think what I need to do is pick this guy and this guy. There we go. Arc length between there and there. Again, if I don't like the tick marks on here, I can pick on here and grab that tick mark and change it to be a filled arrow, 15 degrees, something of the sort, click out. So once again, uh, I wanted a bigger arc. So let's pull this guy way out. Give myself lots of room here, use my shift key. Pick on here. Take this temporary dimension, make it 1500. Okay, so arc length. First pick the arc, then pick the intersecting edges. And then you can put that in there. Escape, escape, arc length. Uh, spot elevation, spot coordinate, and spot slope. We'll come back and do that in our next lesson.